Hello and welcome to episode 31 of Naughty Milk Podcast. This week I'm joined by vegan activist Joey Carbstrong. Joey, thanks so much for coming on the show. No worries, man. Good to see you. No, it's great to have you here, man. I'm such a big fan of your channel, so it's cool to have you on. Um, for the people who don't know who you are, can you give like us a little introduction of who you are and what you do? Yeah, man. Well, um, well, my, my, my internet name's Joey Carbstrong. Carbs are uh, vegan, predominantly, and um, my last name's actually Armstrong, so of a mashup between carbs and Armstrong. Um, I've come from a past of gangs, crime, drugs, um, a, a very harsh and violent past. And I had an epiphany when I was uh, finally got sober for long enough to see the error of my ways when I was um, in prison. And um, a part of this sober epiphany was um, finding veganism and ethical veganism and then moved into uh, being an outspoken advocate for animal rights and also a sober lifestyle promoter. I do online counselling. I help people. Um, but my main passion is helping the most persecuted victims on the planet, which are the animals. Yeah, awesome, man. Like, and, um, yeah, and you've had such an um, interest in life and before veganism and, and after, but um, how did veganism kind of come into your life? Well, that is a very good question. And I didn't reflect on that until a little bit later on in my journey when people started wanting to know how, how it all happened. I wasn't really aware of it. But then I come to a realization that when I was on home detention, um, I was very – I've become – because when you're, when you're addicted to drugs – you use the drugs and what happened is it all come to a halt when I when I got caught by the cops and I was on home detention. And I, I my drug use sort of slowed down a bit. So I started to eat a lot of food because that became my new comfort. So I was eating a lot of fatty pork chops, bacon and big thick Nutella sandwiches. And I was just – I put on a lot of weight fast. I couldn't yeah. go to the gym. Um I was I got really big stretch marks and I was about 115 kilograms so I don't know what that is in pounds over 200 pounds and I'm only 170 centimeters tall so I'm pretty short so I was pretty obese and I was unhappy unhealthy depressed and stuff like that still still um, in the gangs and that still not hadn't learned my lesson yeah. when I was on home detention and um, I, 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 I wanted to lose weight you know uh, I, I wanted to start dating this girl and I knew I was bit I was a bit too overweight for that so I, I was looking on the internet for the best way to lose weight I come across low carb I come across all that as you do you know and then I found a guy called Dan McDonald the life regenerator who's a raw foodist youtuber who does the juicing I don't know if you ever heard of him yeah. but he's he's got a bit of a persona and he's like you know the raw fruits and vegetables have the life force in them and you know <laughs> whatever he was saying dude I was like well you know, it started to make a bit of sense. And he was like, you know, that pa the inflammation from eating the dead food, you need to eat the raw living foods. But one thing that really stuck with me, and it wasn't like he taught me something, it was almost like he showed me something I already knew. And that was um, the fact that when you eat suffering, death and violence, it manifests as anxiety, fear, violence, death, disease in your body. Now, I don't know if there's any science to back this up, but if you look at, you know, people, they're, they're fat, they're sick, they're unhealthy, they're, you know, and their diet reflects that. So I think he planted the seed and I understood karma. I, I understood karma because I'd seen it in my day-to-day -day life. I'd seen, you know, people in the, that criminal world doing bad things and then their life was a reflection of, of themselves. And I, and, I, and I thought like, you know, we're treating these animals like this. We're cutting them up into pieces. We're putting them in our body. What's going to happen to us? And I, I, and I thought, yeah, it, it, he, he planted a seed, a very important seed in my mind. He opened it up and let me realize the truth that I already knew. Like it's like when someone tells you the truth like that, it's like something in your heart already knew that. It was like, wow, you know. And it didn't flourish till about six months later when I got, no, around six months later I got out of prison six or seven months later and then I, I was sober and I made the the change I decided to to go vegan yeah and um is it has there been any looking back at all has it always been 
that you're being vegan and that's you from now on? You know, when I got out of prison, I had two months of home, home detention. If anyone doesn't know what home detention is, it's when you've got a bracelet around your ankle and you can't leave the house. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like being half, half free and half not. So you're, you're in your house, but you just can't leave. So it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty tough, home D, if you do it for a long time. Anyway, when I, when I got out of prison, I did home D again, just a small stint to wait for my parole. And my mum was like saying, I was, mum was smoking and I was like in this health kick and I was like, you know, you shouldn't be smoking, mum. It's not good for you. And she said, there's a lot of things people do. People have a lot of vices that they don't get let go of. And it made me sort of reflect yeah. on my own vices. Like, wait, she's right. Like, I mean, I've always said I'm going to go vegan and I haven't. So I bang the next day, full blown vegan. That was it. I, I did a bit of research on the internet first to find out because I was doing weights then. And I was like, I need protein. How am I going to get protein? Yeah. Like, and then I found out that you didn't need protein for meat and stuff. And I was like, well, pff, there goes that. That was the only thing sort of holding me back. And then I was like, bang, full blown vegan the next day. And it was actually World Vegan Day. I didn't even know till the till the till a year later that it was World Vegan Day. Um, so it was sort of like meant to be in in a way. Like it was pretty cool. But uh, nothing's held me back, man. I, I stuck to it and. Um, the only thing that would have held me back is if I've got back on the drugs and, and the alcohol and stopped caring about things that mattered because um, sobriety was a major part of me going vegan, of having this awareness. Without sobriety, I would have yeah. been stuck in that um, negative mindset and not given a shit about anything unless it was some negative crap I was involved with. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. And, like, how is the reaction from friends and family because it's such a dramatic change of you've been involved with gangs and in jail and stuff like that then suddenly going vegan you don't even meet meat. how do people react dude, to that dude that is such a good question man that is so that you know what dude they were freaking out no joke <laughs> like my brother sat me down one day and he goes joey like you got to look at this through our eyes like before we were too scared to be around you. You constantly, you know, got a, a gun down your pants. With, you're stressing the whole family out. You're always flipping out violent in gangs. And, and now you've done a complete 180. You, you won't even bloody <laughs> – you won't even hurt a chicken. You, you, you don't drink. You don't you, – you, you're preaching about sobriety to all of us and, you know, and, and, and nonviolence and, and you're eating like raw, raw foods and, you know, he goes, you got to look at this from our eyes. It's a bit of a, you know, a shock to our systems. you got to like let us adjust to this, you know what I mean? Because I did a literally a full-on 180 in a very short amount of time, very short amount of time. Yeah, definitely, man. And like, and um, I find that like a lot of people, when you go vegan, sometimes you naturally just lose friends from like when you were when you weren't vegan. Um, people just kind of lose touch and stuff, and you just kind of mature and you move on and stuff like that. But has that been the case for you? Have you still been friends from when you're uh, people from when you were younger and stuff, or is that you just slowly kind of lose touch since you became vegan and stuff? Wow, you're good at this, aren't you, mate? You're asking the good questions, man. <laughs> um, I'll tell you right now, major part of my sobriety was letting go of old friends. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. I've had friends from when I was 15 years old. Now, that will always be my friends. I'll always be there for them if they need me there. But a major part of this, of this transformation, getting sober, was letting go of everyone and being by myself. I had to do that. Otherwise, yeah. there was no chance for me. And I think... I, I, don't, I think a few friends might have been cut at the start. They might have been a little bit like hurt by it, but I think now they would understand what I was doing. I had to separate myself and be alone for a while. And especially with being vegan at the same time and having all these realizations happening, I, I spent a lot of time by myself. Um, you know, I was, I was just riding my bike around. I, I didn't have a license yet. I, I was just riding my bike around the city at, at New Year's. New Year's, I was riding my bike through the city looking at all the drunk people and stuff. Just spent heaps of time by myself going and buying fruits and vegetables and stuff, juicing them, having smoothies and, you know, um, watching the vegan YouTube community online, checking out what's 
educating myself day after day about nutrition. Dr. McDougall, Neil Barnard, um, Cobalt Esselstein, the China study, um, the starch solution, just looking at every single bit of information I could. Gary Orosky started to educate myself on ethics, on animal ethics come really, really, really easily to me. I mean, I don't know. I just, I put myself in other people's positions. I can just do that. I see someone getting hurt and it hurts me. Ah, I don't like it. If someone cuts their finger, I can't stand it. And so ethics really resonated with me. Um, so yeah, I, that's what I did. I stayed by myself. I let go of old friends um, because they were still thick. They're still, they still are to this day. They're still thickly in gangs. They're still um, doing sentences in jail. Um, a lot of them are still using drugs and stuff and or, or drinkers. But, you know, there's a few of mine that have pulled themselves out of it and and the few that have been inspired by my journey, which is so epic, so epic. So, yeah, yeah. I, I do still stay in touch, but you're right. It's a major part of and – a, and, a, and a hard part of going on off on your own feet. Yeah. It's, you need – it takes courage. It takes courage. Yeah, really definitely. Does. And when you – when you think back of if you were to go back of where you were before and you see yourself now, what what do you think would go through your mind? Like that, could you ever picture yourself like uh, like years ago? Could you ever picture yourself being this vegan activist, being this compassionate person? And um, does that what, what would come to mind if you were to think I'll back? I'll tell you right now. I um, I always knew oppression was wrong. I always understood it. I always uh, idolized people like Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King. I, I, these are the people I chose to do my um, projects on at school. Um, like they stood up against, you know, you know, the civil rights movement. And that you know, I memorized the first verse of Martin Luther's um, speech where he's like, um, and just, you know, how Gandhi overthrew the British Empire just one man. You know, just one man and he created this movement that overthrew the British Empire and got freedom for in India, like like that stuff. And like I and you know, people like Tupac Shakur where he was, you know, he was sort of in the the gangster scene, but he he really he understood oppression too. He understood black history and he was speaking out against and in and he in the end he wanted peace. He was you know, he was obviously torn between war and peace, but you know, that song changes, which I use in all my videos, like he was like, We've got to change the way we live we got to change the way we eat and we have to change the way we treat each other and that's just the vegan message if i've ever heard one so back then even when i was stuck in the crimes and violence and gangs and that i i, I think there was a side of me that that underneath all that uh that was it was just waiting to come out just waiting for the right environment for that inner me to come out and say look let, let's start to stand up for those that need it yeah, man, that's that's awesome, and um, I really appreciate you going like being open and and talking about that, man. Um, can you just move it move into to food now? I I know obviously you you, you said you you'd lost weight and you've you've discussed that in your different videos that you have. Um, how much has your diet changed from when you first went vegan until until now? Oh wow, oh, it's, I've gone on a merry go uh, like a roller coaster of different um ways <laughs> to be vegan. I mean, like. So from the start, from the start, I went full raw vegan, all right, fully raw vegan, yeah. um, and I was eating a lot of nuts because I seen this raw vegan bodybuilder. He's like, you got to eat this amount of almonds. This is the amount of almonds you need to eat. And I was putting like, so I was like, I had no idea about like when you're eating raw food. Let's just say you have like a bunch of bananas and you have a massive salad at, with nuts all in that. Never ever eat yeah. a full watermelon because <laughs> that watermelon <laughs> I woke up at like three in the morning once and I was still on home D like and I was like mom I'm dying something's happened to me my stomach oh my god it was the worst pain I've oh, ever fuck. felt she I rang my home D officer just had to leave go to the hospital because it was like an emergency I thought I was gonna die because of the food food yeah. combining thing I had no idea no idea anyway so I was full raw vegan and then um uh, found freely in that on the internet and I was looking at their raw food lifestyle. Yeah. I was doing that for a little while. Uh, to be honest, I don't think I did it correctly. I was just uh, force feeding myself 
eating past satiation, yeah. um, put on a bit, a few, a bit of weight, and then um, I started to go a little bit more whole foodsy. Um, you know, more whole foods uh, while I was bricklaying and boxing and that. Dropped a lot of weight doing that. Um, you know, and yeah, so nowadays, well, I went through another Whole Foods stint, really ultra clean, but nowadays I just try to keep it, you know, half healthy and, you know, whatever whatever is vegan. Just make sure that you're you're predominantly vegan. And if you wanna if you wanna eat healthy yeah. to feel better, then 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 do it. Yeah, do it for yourself. But I personally will only probably start promoting just vegan. <laughs> just make sure it's vegan. Yeah. Like um I think these subgenres of um diet choices in within un, under the vegan, you know, umbrella as you say. I think uh they're really yeah. it does, it's really irrelevant, man. It's irrelevant. Whatever works for you, some some people you know some things work for others that don't work for some so um just make sure it's vegan that's that's what i would say now but yeah i've been i've tried it all yeah tried it all. yeah that was actually going to be one of my my next questions is to get your kind of thoughts on vegan junk food because i see people on youtube and stuff and they're they're, yeah. they're all saying that we need to be a shining example with our foods and uh, highlighting kind of whole foods um do you think that should be the case or it just doesn't matter at the end of the day uh, at the end of the day just uh, be vegan you know, upon reflection um, because let's just say I want to do whole foods and I'm going ultra clean because I want to, you know, feel a certain way, look a certain way. Um, you know, I don't know if that is the best way to promote veganism because veganism is nothing to do with health. Yeah. I mean, you can't be a health vegan. You mean, you, you're not going to not wear a leather jacket for health. I mean, it's nothing to do with health really. When, I mean, <laughs> Yeah. There's health benefits. Benefits. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Health is a big argument if you get in. You know, if you if you want to use that. But but um, personally, I think um, how easy veganism can be is is a really good way to promote it. You know, if you want vegan burgers, vegan hot dogs, vegan ice cream. You know, I, I think you know you always if you're if you're promoting whole foods, I think you have to emphasize to people. You have to really make a point that this is what I'm doing at the moment. Yeah. But if you want to do this. Check this out. Film, film your mates' burgers. Film your mates' yeah. um, um, donuts and stuff, and say this is what you can do. Um, but you know, this is what I'm choosing to do right now. This, if you can't adhere to a strictly whole foods, no oil, um, low fat, um, you know, diet, no sugar, no oil, no salt. If you can't adhere to that, don't fall back into eating dairy, eggs, meat, cheese yeah, exactly. because you want to go out burgers with your friends like you know because that's what can happen and i've seen it with people trying to you know do a full raw diet fully raw diet they'll like if they fail at fully raw they'll go back to eating cheese and meat because they're just so starving and you know so i think the biggest in the big scheme of things it's better to show how easy veganism can be and if you are doing promoting a fully strict whole foods diet on your channel just make sure that um you know you you show how that, that that you can fall back on vegan junk food. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly, man. I hundred um, percent agree. Like at the end of the day, just be vegan. I think we, we can kind of yeah. get wrapped up in the vegan health argument a lot of the time, but at the end of the day, veganism is not to exploit animals, not to eat them. Um, so one hundred percent agree. Um, you've obviously kept the weight off for since well since you lost it you've managed to keep the weight off do you follow like a certain fitness re regime or anything like that uh, and, and do you have any advice for people who are trying to lose weight and how to keep it off uh, yeah well you, I, I would say to people that exercise is fantastic for mental health um, it was a major yeah. major part of me staying sober uh, if I didn't exercise I would have been back on the drugs probably you know like I needed to exercise. I was training when I was in prison. All I did was kept to myself and I trained morning and night every day. Every day I was out there, even on a Sunday, running laps of the oval, doing burpees, doing sit ups and um, doing weights every single day. Um, when I got out, riding my bike everywhere, boxing for a year, every four times a week, boxing, riding my bike on my off days, keeping my head filled with endorphin filled with endorphin because I was used to yeah. getting the endorphin rush from drugs. So <clears throat> major part of having a healthy mental state, especially if you're coming from the lifestyle I was in. 
and just generally if you have low you know low mood you're prone to anxiety depression things like that exercise is fantastic for now when it comes to weight loss not so much not so much exercise is not um that important for weight loss um in my eyes i don't think it is i think it's more for health mental health um physical health strength things like that but if you if you if you're looking you know to if you're really overweight you want to lose a lot of weight steer towards a whole foods uh, diet like you know you might only need to eat 60 70 percent whole foods you know like just you know potatoes and starches and rice and you know white rice is fine and some you know some vegetables and you know and then you know you can have your your, your processed stuff on top of that i mean but you know that might not work for you, you might have to steer towards 80 percent 80 percent whole foods and you know just have a nice big whole foods meal and have your cereal for a dessert or something like that you know you can treat yourself, you know, there's, everyone's so different genetically, how yeah. do they respond to different. So it's really hard to give a blanket advice for everyone, but I'll just say steer towards whole foods. Um, you know, if you want to have treat yourself here and there and, and see how it, how it goes. I mean, don't start trying to cut your calories and restrict your calories. I think um, that can be a little, that, you know, you don't need to vegan when you're eating whole foods vegan, you don't need to cut your calories. You just need to eat more whole foods and a little bit less of the processed um, junk and oils and stuff. And, you know, you should get results. I went full juice fast. I went full juice yeah. fast, <laughs> like drinking juices and eating steamed vegetables if I was starving. And like, is that the best way? Probably not. Probably wouldn't advise it. Like it's, you have to be super, like I was super mentally like, focused and like you know not everyone can do that like you you walk past a nice yeah. big vegan pizza when you're juice fasting and it's like Ugh. so <laughs> yeah my advice steer towards whole, whole foods as much as you can see how you go and you might have to alter it depending on your genetics and how you react go for a walk if you're really really overweight go for a walk or a light ride on the flat on your bike that should be your maximum um, exercise don't burn yourself out really easy and do it consistently day in day out just really easy stuff if you're really really overweight and yeah yeah awesome man and uh, going into uh, activism um were you once it all kind of clicked for you did was it always got your focus to be i'm going to be active i'm going to get the word out there or was that just kind of a gradual process of you becoming an activist I was very outspoken, <laughs> even when I wasn't on YouTube. <laughs> I was just like, it was just me in my day to day life. My mum, my brothers, my dad, my, you know, I was just like, this is what's happening. Look at this, you know, you, dad, you can't. Yeah. Cause my dad was very sick at the time. He, he was, uh, he had suffering from Crohn's disease. He had, um, you know, tumors in his bowels. They were cutting his bowels out, cancer, and um, he. It was just very sick, and I and I seen that it was lifestyle that was causing it. After you know, just being indulged in um, McDougal's work and Dr. Barnard's work and all that, like I, I was like, "Whoa, yeah. this is what's going on, Dad." You know, you need to go starch solution. I was going as far as um, making him starch based meals, and um, so anyway, what the point was is I was very outspoken in my day to day life, and I needed a platform. I just needed yeah. it. I remember saying to the girl I was seeing at the time, like, I've got this fire inside of me. You don't understand. Like, I was laying bricks, boxing at the time, and I was just 40 hours a week laying bricks, and I was like, I can't put my energy into this brick laying. It's just not for me. You don't yeah. understand. I need to help people. It's it's inside of me, and I, I need to let it out. It's like a, it was burning, and I need to do this. And then, like, one, like when I met Abdullah Zainab with Glucose Network, I don't know if you know Abdullah. Yeah. yeah. So I met him. Um, through Durian Rider, I met him. He was he rode from Melbourne to meet Durian Rider, and I seen him. And he made this video with Harley, and he was just like, oh, full energy, full <laughs> inspirational dude. Like he was, he's ten years younger than me, nearly. I was like, oh, this dude's, you know, he's cool, man. And I went and I'd be watching his videos and the way that he just whip his camera out, and he was saying the things that I ha- that I needed to say. He was saying them yeah. on, on camera, and I was like, I need to do this. So one day I went for a ride with that Dula and come back and hopped in my car and I just started filming. I just started filming, just started letting stuff off my mind. And that's how it started. And um, 
that's when I had my platform to to share who I was, and and yeah. I needed that. I needed that. So and then transition from there, like. Yeah, man, I absolutely love your channel. I think I can't remember. I can't remember the first video scene. I think it was like vegan activist destroys. Like I forget the guy's name. I think it's like Kino Body or something like that. Or Kino Body. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I was man, I was hooked on your channel forever since then. I was I'm a big fan of um Joey versus the public series. Um I was gonna ask about the public series because um has your confidence just grew and grew more and more you do street interviews and was there kinda yep. any fear the first few times you, you done the interviews? Hundred percent there was fear. One hundred percent. Um, you know, like it took me a year just to be able to socialise normally in public after getting off drugs and that. Like I, I yeah. had some serious anxiety and and you know social interaction issues like i had to retrain every part of myself i was only used to talking to people yeah. when i was drunk or on drugs you know like so going out there by myself in public with a little i, I started i had an iphone 5 on my belt i had this tiny little microphone i would do the filming myself if you look at the earlier videos i'm looking at the camera yeah. the whole time that's because i'm trying to keep us in frame people were thinking that I was deliberately not looking at the person I was interviewing, but that's because I was just out yeah. there by myself just like this, you know? And my first interview I did with Martin from think about this. So he yeah. was the first vegan YouTuber I was seeing doing uh, interviews. He was the first one. I went out with him. I, I had this awesome in my mind, the karma questioning. Do you believe in karma? Yeah. Uh, would you, do you believe that? what you do to, uh, if you do bad things that can come be returned to you sort of thing. And, and, and the line of questioning was great. And then at the end we asked him if they ate meat and that was like, anyway, Martin said to me, you're really good at this, bro. You should, you know, you're really good at this. You should do it, man. Like seriously. Hey, yeah. like, cause he's like, he didn't have the confidence to approach people and talk the yeah. way that I did, but he was, he's very good at interviews, but he just said to me that I was particularly impressive. And so I decided to do it myself. I was out there with, uh, a few vegans in Rundle Mall and I just whipped out the, my phone and started interviewing people. And my style has developed a lot as I've progressed as an activist. I think uh, um, my questions are a lot, uh, they're more thought out. Uh, before I was very reserved. I was yeah. shitting myself sometimes. I remember when I went to film the dairy interviews, my third tutorial versus the public, the dairy one, I was, I was driving in the city and I was like, you know, I was looking at all the people in the city and I was like, I'm petrified of this. Like, these yeah. are fuck really controversial questions, man. And I'm out here by myself and I just, I wanted to turn back and I was like, you know what, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And I thought about, you know, animal rights and I was like, you know, that's why I'm doing this, man. So just do it. Like, don't let fear hold you back. Like, remember the reason you're doing this and then, yeah, I just kept going. So... Yeah, man, it's like yeah. it's it's a really it's a really brave thing to do. It's also it can it can be a very dangerous thing because obviously, as you're saying, it's like controversial topics, and uh, people yeah. do get they can automatically kind of go in a defense when you start to question what they're doing. Uh, so it's also it's yeah. very brave of you. So it's awesome to see uh, how many you're doing as well. Um, they've had some like crazy responses from the public of um the reasons why they agree to eating animals and stuff. Uh, but is there any responses or people that kind of that have stood out to you well i've nearly been beaten up <laughs> um i've nearly been beaten up for like you know just um that was at a spiritual fair yeah a I saw that spiritual one, fair by a reiki master you know <laughs> like they're spiritual people when you start questioning people's moral stance on animal abuse it's just like because they have this ingrained real ingrained belief that they are spiritual and they're in this positive vibe is emanating from them and then i was just like you know question their moral stance on animal eating and boom what that's got nothing to do with spirituality yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so i've had responses like that you know people's dads coming to beat me up and yeah that's crazy. Like, yeah, and, um, I, I, I couldn't say what's actually the people that, it, yeah. Like, I think there was crazy. like a vegetarian um, who. You know what it is? You, you're hunted? The hunted yeah. vegetarian? Yeah. Is that the one? Yeah, that was the, crazy. The, like, <laughs> I think 
yeah, she she hunted. She she believed in animal ethics, but she hunted when she was out um with Aboriginals in yeah. um out back Australia. And you know, so yeah, that was pretty crazy. Yeah, there's been a lot. The people just walked off and while I'm interviewing them, um, you know, about um meat causing cancer and whether they think it's you know child abuse to knowingly feed them carcinogenic um, meat substance. Not people that that don't know, but people that have been informed that yeah. that processed meats are carcinogenic, and then to knowingly give your children known carcinogens. Yeah. Is that, could that be considered child abuse? Now, that was a controversial question. People just walking off. I had a hot dog vendor who was selling hot dogs just walk yeah. off on me. So that was pretty controversial too. It was also quite awkward walking back and p- back past him every time I was interviewing people. Like, <laughs> he's still there looking at me. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, that's something I've got. Like, I had my, me and my girlfriend raising our daughter vegan. And that's something that a comment that we've had. It's that it's child abuse to raise your your child vegan, which it seems. Uh, it's, yeah. I don't know. It's just. Um, I don't know. It's just. It's, that, it seems that, crazy a bit because it seems like the most normal thing in the world does that we're not exposing her to cruelty and stuff. And, um, but I see. Okay. A lot of people can, um, say things like that. I think it's just because they don't quite understand it, so they feel they have to kind of challenge it and. Yeah. Talk shit, yeah. You know, well, it's going against the norm. They they honestly believe that you know meat, dairy, and eggs are the healthiest food groups yeah. on the planet. Like the, the doctors all agree, and the you know the nutritionists all agree that you need certain nutrients from meat. You can't be a pregnant woman if you're not eating meat. You know, yeah. and cheese and dairy and stuff. You know, they've done a very good job at infiltrating the nutrition um, data and you know manufacturing their own you know you know sort of rigged scientific studies and you know so yeah. you know you can't blame people for thinking veganism is completely unhealthy and their kids are going to die from yeah. it but you know i would test their um meat sort of i'll test i'll test the children like this show them what happens to animals yeah so that they can get their meat see if they still want to eat it you know that that should be like that should be, should be like you know the easiest test to see whether eating meat is natural and stuff like kids don't want to sit you know, some kids don't even have to see what happens to animals yeah, to not it, want yeah. to eat animals. They don't. They yeah. just have to know that it's an animal. And they're like, I don't want to eat an animal. Kids are born with this innate, you know, it's in our nature to be vegan. Like, it's so obvious. Like, we're going against our nature to yeah. eat meat, dairy, and eggs, which are b- they're bad for our health anyway. So, Yeah, man. Like, um, do you think um, there's, there's a lot of people who – They'll be vegan and they're happy enough just being vegan. Uh, but I guess the question is, uh, is being vegan enough or do we need more vegan activists? Um, well, being vegan is the least we can do. Yeah. That is the bare minimum we can do is just be like a piece of coral, just like just, just not hurting or, or doing our best not to hurt the animals in the environment around us. Of course, just by existing and being human, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna displace some of the wildlife, you know, building houses and stuff. But this, this is not what we're talking about. Being vegan is obviously practically, as far as practical, reducing the suffering and cruelty in your life. It's just like the minimum. But yeah. once w- w- you, the way you can start doing something is being proactive. I mean, I don't know if everyone should be an activist yeah. in the sense like James Aspie. Everyone can do what James Aspie does. Everyone can do what Earthling Ed, Ed does. Everyone can do what Joey Carbstrong does. I don't know about that. Yeah. Everyone can do something, though, in their own way, like being proactive as in, you know, sharing recipes at your school with other parents, dropping truth bombs about health, sharing documentaries on your Facebook page, um, um, you know, making your household strictly vegan household, showing people how easy veganism can be, yeah. using only cruelty-free products in your beauty salon, um, you know, just stuff like you could make a, a little avatar and you could have your own um, anonymous avatar. You could have your own Instagram account sharing slaughterhouse um, images yeah. of animal cruelty and stuff. Um, everyone can do something, but not everyone has to be – what their vision of an activist is because that can be daunting. I mean, you know, not everyone can sit there facing slaughterhouse footage 
every weekend showing it to people and out there in the public questioning people's um, morals, you know, in, look, that's not for everyone. And I understand that. I mean, I used to have a different view, like everyone has to be an activist on YouTube. Yeah. I don't know about that. But if that's what you, you think that you're cut out for, then then go for it, man. Go for it. Because everyone is slightly different in character and can handle slightly different things. And that's the beauty of it. We need different forms of activism everywhere, all working together. So, Yeah, exactly. And um, do you, how do you cope with, obviously you're doing a lot of street interviews, you're showing a lot of uh, slaughterhouse, slaughterhouse footage. Um, how do you deal with, how do you stay motivated, I guess? Because if you're constantly around seeing this like horrible footage um, and people being negative quite a lot of the time, how do you stay kind of motivated to kind of keep going? Uh, motivation comes from the realisation of how much work there is to do yeah, and focusing on the animals. Otherwise, if I was doing this for any other reason, I don't know if I'd still be doing it, to be honest, because, you know, it. I just it's pretty taxing. But I know the reason why I'm doing it, which was keeps me solid in it, like a, a yeah. hard stance in this because I know it's for a very, very noble cause and it needs to be fought. Like this, there's no more noble cause than standing up for the most innocent the most oppressed beings on this planet that everyone has literally forgotten about. I don't need to sit here in a room full of people and talk about how important human rights are. Yeah. Do I? We all are on the same level with that. We all know human rights violations are wrong, but how many people can you honestly say no, that animals deserve rights? Animals deserve a right to a life without suffering. That's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. That is why it's the most noble cause. Now, Am I saying, like, I would one day stand up for humans the way I stand up for animals? 100% I would. 100% I would. I don't want to yeah. see humans getting hurt. But my job on this earth is to stand up for the, those who people have forgotten, the ones who can't speak up for themselves. They can't break out of their prison camp and say, you've got to see what's going on in there. They're killing yeah. my, my family. They're breeding. My, you know, like, they can't. That's why we need to go in there, get – the footage out, show it to people and be their voice. And that's why I think there's no more noble cause. And that's what keeps me motivated. And, and I would plead with other vegans to look at it like that too. I know it's it, when you've been vegan for a while, it's easy to like sort of take the back foot and be like, Oh, it's a bit too hard, but everyone can do something. And even if it's just sharing activist yeah. videos that you, you wish you could do what they did, just share that. Yeah. 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 yeah watch this, watch this, you know, like, so yeah. No man, I like it. the good thing is there's people out there like yourself, like um, James Aspey, all these types of people that keep people inspired, keep people motivated. So I really appreciate um, you doing what you do because it keeps me motivated, and I can obviously speak for so many other people that you've inspired as well. Um, you might have seen there's a lot of talk at the moment um, in the UK about bringing back fox hunting. I just want to kind of get your take on single issue campaigns, and do you feel it kind of uh, benefits the vegan movement at all? Well, that's a very complicated uh, topic. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so veganism obviously solves all of these issues. Being yeah. vegan um, solves all of them at once. So promoting veganism is basically what, sh what should be the foundation of everyone's activism, just promote veganism because it solves fox hunting, it solves live export, it solves, um, you know, all of these, all of these issues – are solved by being vegan. Nothing yeah. comes close. It is basically the golden key to solve all of these animal issues. Do I say, do I think single issue campaigns shouldn't be held, shouldn't be done? Um, no, 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 I don't because I know that I know a lot of meat, dairy, and egg that, 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 that think live export is so wrong that think, yeah. um, you know, dolphin captivity is wrong that 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 save the whales and i think that that is sort of getting their foot in okay yeah. once we got their foot in it's our vegan it's the vegans job then to go save the whales what about this animal suffering what about that so i think um these single like like save the, the dogs in yulin that's yeah. the perfect way to get someone here in australia pointing the finger to see the hypocrisy 
in saving the dogs in Newland while you're eating the pigs out of the gas chambers in Adelaide, Australia. Come on. Now, so I think these single issue campaigns have their place because yeah. so many meat, dairy, and egg eaters, non vegans, are involved in sing- single issue campaigns, genuinely involved in helping these animals while with the same hand committing an act of violence to get their dinner plate filled with flesh. So, yeah, there's two ways to look at it. Veganism solves them all. I personally wouldn't, I prefer to promote veganism. Yeah. And I stick to the most oppressed, persecuted animals at the, well, cows, chickens, pigs, lambs. That's what, that's what, where I, my, my focus predominantly is. Um, fur activism. Um, Earthling Ed's got a great video about fur activism. He really yeah. changed my perception of it. And he said that because fur is just, you know, pet, everyone knows wearing dogs, you know, even yeah. meat, dairy, and eggs, we can all agree, like, you know, like that is messed up. People have pet dogs. They can make the connection much, e- much easier. Yeah, so he thinks exactly. we should attack it now while people all agree, majority of people agree that it's wrong. And he said that, that that's, that's our chance. So, yeah, these single issue campaigns have their place. And, um, but I prefer to pr- promote that veganism solves everything. Yeah, no, definitely. A hundred percent agree. It uh, definitely has its place. I think it's just, uh, um, if someone's making that connect, like connection, like with like foxes or with uh, dogs and stuff, as you're saying, it's like, it's one foot in the door. They've got that open mind that they are against animal cruelty. And it's just, it may just yeah. be a slow process, but they'll, they'll get there. I know. And look at, look at like those outspoken celebrities like Ricky Gervais or whatever his yeah. name is. And he's just like, you know, animal cruelty is wrong. And then he get like a million vegans, but you still eat burgers. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is hypocrisy. And this is because he cares about elephants and, you know, game hunting and, you know, like, you know, people killing lions and stuff publicly. This is a ticket for vegans to go, wait a second, bro. Wait a second. Yeah. What about the cows, pigs, chickens, you know? So I think they have their place. Yeah, 100%. Um, when yeah. I... I spoke to my friend who's a big fan of your uh, your channel, uh, my friend Laura. Uh, she wanted to ask a question, uh, if, that, if that's all right. Um, she was wondering what your take is on when people say you have to, you can't be manly if you don't if if you don't eat animals. Um, and some people see it as like a like a weakness that men who if uh, who care about animals and sometimes they're embarrassed to eat meat uh, in front of their friends of like the fear of being kind of ridiculed or anything like that. Yeah. Um, what is yeah. your kind of thoughts on that and do you have any advice on how to get people through to people with that kind of mentality yeah well i'd so i'd put you i'd say it straight up just like this it takes more of a man to stand up for the most innocent than it does to hurt and oppress them think about it yeah children in this society someone hurts a child you walk up to, you 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 we take up arms and we get that man you know people would think that's a noble cause standing up for children are you going to let someone touch anyone's kid pedophiles we chuck them in prison we don't want them in our society you know we'd kick the hell out of someone if we seen someone hurting a child yeah that's a, yeah. animal rights is a, is is the same is the same you, you're standing up for innocent animals that can't defend themselves against the whole ma- the vast majority of society now you tell me how much courage that takes tell me how much courage it takes to walk into a work site where there's people eating meat drinking iced coffee milk out of dairy's milk with a vegan tattoo on your neck saying, well, I don't think um, participating in violence against innocent animals is right. It takes more courage to do that than it does to conform to what everyone else is doing, doesn't it? You know, and, and you're, gonna get in, you're gonna get in arguments. You're gonna, you know, you know, there's gonna be awkward situations at dinner when you're saying like, you know, yeah. this takes courage. It takes a man to do that, you know, and not saying it, it takes a woman too, a strong hearted woman. It takes courage, that's what I mean. I'm not saying men or, but yeah. it is, the, the issue is predominantly with men who think it's, you know, macho to eat a steak, which has been programmed into them through advertising. Yeah. So I think with women, it's a lot easier because they don't have that um, that pressure on them to be this mm-hmm. macho person. So I think with women, veganism comes a lot more naturally. They've got that 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 empathy that they're they're allowed to express their emotions, you know, in this society. But men, it's a little bit more different. And I'd say to them, look, look mate, I used to be a you know, I used to be a violent person towards people. I wouldn't mess around, man. But like, I still understand that standing up for animals is a noble cause. It takes courage and, it, and you know, a real, a real human to stand up. 
hundred percent, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, we'll wrap up with you at the moment, but do you have any advice for people who are uh, are looking to go vegan or wanting to go vegan? Yeah, well, my advice would be like, under, uh, first, you need to understand why you want to do it. Why do you want to go vegan? I mean, there's there's literally there's many benefits to going vegan, but there's one one of the only reasons to go vegan is um, for animals animal rights. So you're doing this for an, an altruistic reason. Um, you know, I, I think understand the suffering that's going on, face it, face it firsthand. Um, you need to see the images from inside and, and what these animals are going through. And it's hard. It's very hard to do. I would say to do it, you know, um, so then you get a real deeper understanding of what veganism is. It's not a diet. It's not um, anything else. It's not... Um, you know, a trend. It's literally about animal rights. It's about, um, you know, standing up for these innocent beings. And that's, that's what I would say to people. Like, um, you need to get an understanding of what veganism is. Like a lot, I see a lot of new vegans that get into it because of seeing some diet coach on YouTube and they think veganism is a diet. So what happens is they go vegan because of this diet coach and they lose, they lose faith in this diet coach and then they lose faith in veganism because they haven't even gained an understanding of what veganism is. Yeah. So, you know, education, educating yourself on animal rights and what's going on is, is massive, man, because without that, why would you stay vegan? You know, like, you know, so that would be my advice. Understand why you're doing it. Educate yourself on what's happening to animals. Make a, make a decision with your heart, not with your, conditioning awesome man and uh, what can people expect from the future are you go are you going to the um, vegan camp out in in july yeah so july yeah. me and james are flying over uh for the vegan camp out um yeah. be doing a speech there i'll just be doing a you know i'll just be telling people about my life story and yeah. how i've become it's similar to what we're doing here uh, i'll be doing an activism workshop there then we'll be flying i will be traveling to norwich uh to do a similar thing in norwich yeah. Um, and then we'll be doing some major activism around London with um, Ed and Paul Bashir doing Massive Cube of Truth. Uh, it's going to be big. We're going to be there for nearly two weeks just uh, doing vigils. And so uh, stay in touch with me, me and James's um, Instagram, YouTube, and things like that. We'll be keeping you updated on what's going on. And yeah, we'll be traveling around UK doing activism. And it should be massive. It should be epic. Awesome, man. And uh, where can people find you online? Uh, Joey Carbstrong on everything, Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube. I've got a Snapchat. I think yeah. that my Snapchat um, name is in the link of my, in the description box of my YouTube channel. And um, yeah, it's not hard to find me. Awesome, man. Well, I really appreciate you doing this. Um, again, I'm such a big fan of your channel. Uh, you're a massive inspiration to me and again, to so many others. So I really appreciate you taking the time out uh, your busy day and having a, having a chat, man. Thanks, bro. You asked some really good questions, man. That was really well set out, and you really you knew you knew the to spark to ignite that spark in me. It was good. Oh, that's awesome, man. I really appreciate it. So there we have it. That's episode thirty-one done. I really hope you enjoyed it. I had a great time speaking with Joey. So Joey, thanks for so much for coming on the show. Like Joey was mentioning, you can find him on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. At Joey Carbstrong is a pretty easy guy to find it, as he was saying. And if you're looking to contact myself, you can get me over Instagram and Facebook at Naughty Milk Podcast and also on Twitter as well at Naughty Milk Pod. And if you're looking to contact me by email, you can get me over at Naughty Milk Podcast at Outlook.com. I'll take the time again just to thank so much for doing this episode and for the continued support that's shown for Naughty Milk Podcast.